I first covered UV about six months ago and thought that it had a lot of promise, but just wasn't ready for production yet. Well, I've been using it personally since then and the team has been busy. In fact, they've recently dropped a ton of new functionality, but we'll get to that later. First, the rematch. The first thing I'm going to do differently from last time is install UV using their installation script instead of relying on pip to install UV. This way the installation is completely independent of Python. And then we'll simply resource it and now we have UV available. And we can already see there's a whole lot of new functionality that exists within the tool. One other neat thing that they added to UV since the last time is the ability for it to self-update. Since we installed it via the script, we can just use this command to have it update itself, and it tells us that we're on the latest version. Of course, because we just installed it. Okay, now let's start comparing the two performance-wise. Remember, pip is on the left, uv is on the right. And we're simply just going to test the installation speed for requests. We'll kick off pip, and that took 2.6 seconds. And then notice how uv saves us from installing packages outside of a virtual environment. While we can install it on the system by passing the system flag, I'm going to keep with the best practice by just creating a new virtual environment now. And to do that, we're just going to run uv venv, and that's it. Now we have a new virtual environment. So let's try the install again. And that completed in about 0.7 seconds. So already more than three times faster for a pretty basic package. Also, I definitely prefer pip's version of the output here. All right, let's move on to something a little bit more complicated and where pip failed last time. And that was during the installation of PyTorch. We'll let pip start running on the left. And that completed in just over 24 seconds. Now for UV on the right, you still can't use the exact installation script for CPU based installs just because of the way that PyTorch packages things in a non standard way. Instead, you have to use a little workaround where you specify the version number of Torch plus CPU here. And we'll let that run. Okay, look at that. This also completed in 7.8 seconds. So again, three times faster than PIP. All right, and then for the final comparison between the two, we're going to have them install one of my large projects at work that has a significant amount of dependencies. And this time we're going to have them run at approximately the same time. So we'll kick off pip, and then we'll kick off uv on the right, and we'll see which one wins. Last time this was about dead even. And we see... UV on the right has already completed in 10.34 seconds. And finally, PIP completed on the left at 1 minute and 45 seconds. And with that, I've seen enough. In my opinion, UV has matched enough critical PIP compatibility for it to be production ready. And with the speed and safety improvements, it's the clear winner. But wait, there's more. The UV team has also been hard at work adding new functionality that aims to replace projects like PIPX, Poetry, PDM, and Rye. Also, if you're new to the channel and like the Python language and ecosystem, check out a few of my other videos and consider subscribing. Also, if you know of any other cool new tools around the language, let me know down in the comments. Speaking of tools, the first of these new additions we'll touch on is tool management. And what I mean by that is UV gives you the ability to install some type of tool on your system in an isolated environment without having to install on every single virtual environment that you have. And the way we do this is using UV tool install and then the name of the tool. Typically, these will be things that expose some type of CLI or TUI that you'd use independently from other tools. You'll notice that it installed it in .local slash bin. It even checks our path to let us know that that directory is not in our path, so we need to add that. And after adding it to the path, we can just run the version for that tool, which does its thing and prints out its version information. 
You can also do temporary installs for tools that you use less frequently by using UVX, like Pipex. One tool that they show off in their blog post, and one I've not used before, is a tool called Posting. So if we run UVX Posting, it'll install that in a temporary environment and launch the tool. And sending a request to Google shows us the content of the request. All right, let's close that out. And at this point, the tool should be gone. I'm not going to stay too long on a lot of this new functionality because I just want to give a quick overview of what they've added. If you want me to dig deeper into specific areas, let me know and I'll be sure to do that. Now, another thing UV can do is it can run scripts. So I created a quick test script to demonstrate this being myscript.py, which just prints out, I'm just a simple test script. And while UV can't run scripts normally like this, UV run my script, its real utility comes in dealing with scripts that have third party dependencies. So if we were to modify my script to both import requests as well as import a connection object from Hush, then we're not going to do anything with it. So if we save that, you'll notice on the right I have a watch going so I can monitor changes to the file. We can now UV to add dependencies to the script specifying our script name, and then adding our two new dependencies, both request and hush. And it tells us that it's updated my script on the left. And if you look on the right, it added a new metadata comment section at the top of the script. And if we run it again, UV will install the dependencies in a temporary environment. Here we see on the left that it read the inline script metadata from the script. It installed those three packages since these are both dependencies of a project that we installed earlier, it only needed three milliseconds to install them, and then it executed our script. That's pretty nice. And in my opinion, a pretty big improvement to how we can share scripts between one another. Because this metadata section that we see on the right is something we can add to any of the scripts that we use, and then just tell people to run it with UV, and it'll take care of all the dependencies for them. So I like that. Now, not only can it manage pools and scripts, but the UV team has also taken on project management. So much like Cargo for the Rust ecosystem, UV allows us to init new projects. And there's a number of different options that go into project management, but I'm just going to run through one path. And for this, I'm going to specify the package flag, and we're just going to call this test app. And we see that it's created a new test app directory. And in this new directory, which we can see the structure on the right, we see it's added a few things. First will just be a empty readme, a pyproject.toml, which we'll look in real quick. Let's actually do that with syntax highlighting, where it creates an initial pyproject.toml for us, including some basic project metadata, the CLI entry point for our script, as well as defining some type of build system. Now, since UV doesn't currently have a build system, it defaults to hatch though they are working on their own which i'll be interested to see how that turns out since this has defined a hello cli tool we should be able to use uv to run hello and see what happens okay so it did a few things first it created a new virtual environment it built our app and installed the package and then finally it ran the script hello from test app which we'll see if we look under source test app and then dunder nip it just defines that hello function. Another interesting thing that it did is it added a new uv.lock file, which right now, since we don't really have any dependencies for our project, there's not really anything in it. Speaking of adding dependencies to our project, let's watch the pyproject.toml file on the right while we add some dependencies to our project. To do that, we'll say uv add, and we'll stick with the theme of adding request in there. And we see immediately, it updated our pyproject.toml to add requests and the latest version of requests. You can also add development requirements. To do that, same thing, uv add pytest and rough, and then we're going to specify this dev flag. After adding those, we see it added a new dev dependencies section in our pyproject.toml. And then another common thing that you see is adding optional dependencies. To do that, we're going to add click as an optional dependency for our CLI. 
if we run that, UV then adds a new optional dependency group called CLI with click in it. Okay, now we've added a number of dependencies, so let's look at our uv.lock file. And here we see quite a bit of a difference. Now, most of the time, we don't really need to pay too much attention of what the contents of this file are, but it's basically just a resolved version of each dependency, including their sub-dependencies. So even though we've just added requests, click, pytest, and rough, there's different sub-dependencies for each of those packages. And this basically just breaks that down into the specific dependencies underneath there. And then the final section that we're going to cover is Python version management. And this is another cool one. Since UV lives outside of Python, it can manage Python installations. We can see what versions of Python we have on our system by running UV Python list. And here we see a list of versions on the left, as well as their location on the system on the Right, here we have 3.12 and 3.11 installed. But what if I want to install Python 3.10? Well, we can easily do that by running UV, Python install, and then 3.10. Let's add a time to this just to see how long it takes. And just like that, it installed a new version of Python in just over a second. That's very impressive. If we check out our list now, we see that it did install it in a different location. Now, while I could simulink it to a bin directory, add that to my path, etc., I don't really need to do that if I'm just going to use it with UV. Because in this new directory, this altver directory, we can tell UV that we want it to pin Python 3.10 to this location. And now, when we create a new virtual environment, it tells us that it's using Python 3.10 to create this new virtual environment. And if we also use UV to install IPython, and then for the first time in this entire video, activate a virtual environment, then load up IPython, we see Python 3.10.14. That is really nice. Because sometimes, depending on the projects that you're working on locally, you may have to use different versions of Python. And having this ability with UV to just natively manage installed versions of Python, this really puts UV in the no-brainer category. So although I called it earlier, after the pip compatibility test, the additional functionality that the UV team has added on top of that really sets this tool apart as the future of Python package management.